Hello. How's everybody doing? My name is Brandon. And I'm Ryan. And we're from Easy Swap Pots. We're extremely excited to show you our newest product. And we are even more excited to show you guys how to make your own. So grab a sewing machine and an old pair of jeans and let's get started. Hey, so I got a question for you. Does size matter? <laughs> Actually, glad you asked. It certainly does matter. Uh, we noticed that depending on the size of jeans and whether they're male or female jeans really does play a difference in the size and the extra junk in the trunk that they put on these jeans. So why don't we make sure we check our chart And if you don't have any of the sizes that you see on the chart, do not panic. For under five bucks, you can find them from either Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or don't forget to check out your local thrift store. And yes, you can use jean shorts. They do not have to be pants. All right, so let's actually get to making them. Let's get to step one. Absolutely. All right, so the real first step is actually determining what size hanging basket we want to make a denim liner for. And to show you how to do that, I'm going to leave it up to Ryan. All right. So you got your hanging basket. You want to grab a tape measure or a yardstick. And all you want to do is measure across the top, left to right or left to right, whichever one works better for you. But we're just going to measure straight across. And you can see here, we got 12 inches. So we have a 12 inch hanging basket. So now that we know that this is a 12 inch hanging basket, we can go back to our chart to see what size jeans that we can use for this. Let's do that. All right, so it's on to step two. Time to do some pinning. Brandon's gonna show you how that's done. All right, so we're gonna take our jeans that we wanna make into liners and first step is turn them inside out. These were some good old Tommy Hill figures. Tommy? <laughs> Those are probably from high school, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got them inside out. As you can see, the back is always higher than the front. So we're gonna take some of our binder clips. Whoop. Take some of our binder clips and make that even. Or flush on the top, whichever you prefer. CNC terms. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Right. So now that we have the waist all flushed out, it's time to take your jeans, lay them out, um, butt side down. down. He knew it, he knew it. <laughs> so because the butt always has extra fabric, we're gonna reach right here in the crotch area and then just pull the fabric forward. And all you get is this extra butt material down by the crotch and then the jeans always want to be angled out while our, our hanging baskets need to be rounded in. So then we just need to take the leggings and just make them more straight. So instead of being straight out, you got them more together, up and down. Yep. And then the biggest point is, is that you're just working to fold this so that your sewing machine can get through all the material. So as flat as possible. The only attachment you might need, or not even an attachment, but a little gizmo, is going to be a seam jumper, which we'll show you that shortly. Oops. Oh, you need to pin it first, eh? Yep. Just need to pin it. Pin it to win it. That's right. Just don't pin your finger, all right? All right. So you can see I got my crotch area all pinned up right here. It's nice and flat. You can also see that our lines are more perpendicular on our legs. Just to show you guys that things won't always look the same when it comes down to that area, you can see there looks a little different. The biggest part is that you just have it flat so it's nice and easy to sew and that you have the right distance going down. So there you go. And then on to the next step, I will leave that up to Ryan. All right, so we gotta do a little bit of measuring for this 12 inch. We also do have a chart, so you know which uh, measurements you need to do. From the center on here, I need to go down 12 and a half inches. So I'm gonna take a tape measure or a yardstick. 
Lock that down, grab a Sharpie, chalk, something. You don't have to worry about what you use to mark it because it will be on the inside of the liner and it won't affect the actual finished look. So I've got 12 and a half here. Now I need to mark six and a half on my outside, on both sides. Don't have to be super accurate or fancy on this. There we go, we got that marked. So now you can either grab like a five gallon pail or say like a big like a popcorn bowl or something to kind of get the arch or you could freehand it. That is your choice. So we got this marked. I just grabbed a serving tray. So pretty much I need to go from my point here to my point here and I need to make a radius. This isn't going to be exact. I'm still going to have to freehand it a little bit. Something to that effect right there. I gotta do the same thing on this side. So there we have it. Good. Yep. All right, so we got it all marked out. Now we need to pin it before we do a little bit of cutting. I'm going to do this all the way around. Right, yep. So we're all pinned up right here. Now it's time to do a little bit of cutting. If you want, you could draw another line here. We stay roughly about an inch, inch and a half away from our red line because this is where we're going to sew. So if you wanted to, you could freehand it. So I'm going to be cutting on the bottom red line. It is going to be a little thick to get through these uh, seams. But if you had a pair of sewing scissors, I'm sure it would go a little easier. So there we have it. So before we go on to the next step, you can use your legs to uh, patch some holes in your jeans if you have holes in your jeans. Otherwise, you can always use them for the next project. So I'm going to turn you over to Brandon, and he's going to show you how to sew these together. Well, thanks, Ryan, for getting us to the final stage. A uh, couple things to go over. On your... A couple things to go over. You're going to want a denim needle in your sewing machine just to prevent any possible breaking on that needle especially when you're going over the seam. And then the other thing that you're going to need is this little tool, gadget, whatever you want to call it. It's a seam jumper, and that will be necessary. So let's get to it. I would say the most important thing is to talk nicely to your sewing machine. A good tip from my mother. So we're going to take our denim liner and put the final um, sew on it. Another thing you're gonna want is a polyester or polypropylene thread over cotton thread, as that will hold up a lot longer in the elements outside. So let's get to it. Again, we're sewing right on the line or just below the line. It's not that big of a deal. We did leave ourselves some extra material. All right, maybe that's right there. All righty. Hum, baby, hum. Slow and steady wins the race. Do a little back stitch to lock it in. And then I'm just stopping to pull out pins as I go.
All right, so we're coming up on the seam. Time to pull up that seam jumper. It's got a real thick side and a thinner side, so all just depending on what fits. We're gonna slide this under here. Okay. Left the foot. And it's lifted. All right. Foot back down. And then we just gotta take it real slow over this area. If you're gonna break a needle, this is gonna be the area. So your thing fell out. All right. We made it, guys. On the home stretch. And then we need to do one more last back stitch to lock in this side. So now that Brandon's got this all sewn up, we are so close to getting this thing planted up. We want to take our clips off. And then we're going to want to flip this guy inside out. And hopefully you didn't miss any pins. So there you go. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? I'll let Brandon put it in for you. So you can see we got extra material. That's truly a blessing as it allows you to form to any basket shape and the extra material just happens to be extra water holding capacity so it'll actually make you go longer in between having to water. And the biggest trick is just to pull up in the center and then work the sides down. Why don't you bring in the camera so we can show them. So as you can see, we got a bunch of extra material that will lay nice and flat and like I said, provide a lot of water holding capacity. And there you have it folks. We just completed the do-it-yourself recycled jean planter hanging basket liner. Yep. So now that you know how to make one of these, you got yourself a couple months before the weather turns nice and you can plant one up for yourself. And another fun fact. Mother's Day is just a couple months away as well, so why don't you make one up for her too? And while you're at it, share with every grandma, father, child, or every gardening enthusiast, enthusiast everywhere, because they are sure to turn some heads. They make a great gift idea, and also, we would love to see your pictures. So please send them to us, and make sure you tag us in them, so we can find them easily. Until, Until next time, peace.